Welcome to Delivery Optimization Modes and Configuration video. I am Saurabh Sarkar and I am a Product Manager in Intune for Education Product Group. In this video, we are going to talk about the different operating modes, how they work and how they could work in your environment. We'll talk about some additional policies that can further optimize delivery optimization for your needs. Finally, we'll cover how you can get started on troubleshooting and monitoring delivery optimization. If you are new to delivery optimization, you might want to start by checking out our overview video at aka.ms slash i4e slash do. Let's get started by talking about the ways delivery optimization can function. Delivery optimization has four modes. There is LAN mode, group mode, internet, HTTP only and disabled. In LAN mode, devices share content across the same network and are grouped based on public IP addresses they use to access the internet. In group mode, devices are grouped together using a group ID which can be applied directly or dynamically using several methods. In internet mode, devices can share content with other internet-based clients. In HTTP-only mode, delivery optimization is used to ensure the download is reliable, but all the content comes directly from the content delivery network with no peers. If necessary, delivery optimization can also be disabled, which results in direct HTTP downloads. In managed environments, we see LAN mode and group mode as the most common. LAN mode, aka same NAT peer-to-peer, -peer, is the default configuration of delivery optimization. In this configuration, delivery optimization seeks peers in the same local network. It does this by identifying peers behind the same NAT otherwise known as devices breaking out to the internet using the same public IP address. Client A requests for peers. DO returns a list of private IP addresses for peer B. Client A attempts to connect to client B over port 7680. Client B provides parts of the file download to client A. In this example, because clients C and D are not using the same external IP addresses, DO doesn't return them as available peers, even though they can probably communicate with each other on the private network. Now let's see an example across subnets from the same external IP address. In this example, we are using LAN mode as before, but both subnets break out to the internet with the same external IP addresses. Client A requests for peers. DO returns a list of private IP addresses for peer B, C, and D. Client A attempts to connect to client B, C, and D over port 7680. Client B, C, and D provide parts of the file download to client A. The last example may not have been the behavior you desire on your network. Perhaps you have a lot of physical locations connected across private network links, but they all share a public external IP address. In that case, you may want to restrict the peers that DO can provide. DO allows the ability to restrict peer selection by subnet mask or local peer discovery. If we use LAN mode like before, but also enable the subnet restriction, we can see that even though both subnets break out to the internet with the same external IP, content is only shared within the subnet. Client A requests for peers. DO returns a list of private IP addresses for peer B. Client A attempts to connect to client B over port 7680. Client B provides parts of the file download to client A. If we use LAN mode like before, but enable the local peer discovery restriction, we get similar behavior to the subnet restriction, except rather than require a connection to delivery optimization cloud service, 
the client is able to send a broadcast to the local network using a protocol called DNS SD. Client A connects to delivery optimization service to get metadata. Client A sends a broadcast to the local network to discover peers. Client B responds. Client A attempts to connect to client B over port 7680. Client B provides part of the file download to client A. Now these dynamic grouping options are great, but you may want more control. Maybe you want to share data across VLANs easily, or you just want to be sure devices are grouped as you expect. This is where group mode comes in. With group mode, we have two options, direct assignment and group ID source. With direct assignment, you can create a GUID for a group and assign it directly to devices through device profiles. With group ID source, we can create a more dynamic model that uses external options for getting a group ID like DHCP scopes, DNS or AD sites for on-premise devices. Let's check out how group mode works. In this example, clients A, B and E are part of the blue group and clients C and D are part of the purple group. When client A requests for peers, DO Cloud Service evaluates the internal IP, group ID, subnet mask, and external IP address. All clients with the blue group ID are considered in the same peer group. Within the peer group, clients with the same external IP are considered as in the same LAN. Client A attempts to connect to LAN peers first, client B in this case, over port 7680. If unsuccessful, client A will attempt to connect to group peers using internal IP first, then using NAT traversal via the external IP. But client B will never connect to client C and D in the purple group. To create a direct assignment group ID, you can use the PowerShell new GUID command to create a unique GUID and then apply it using an Intune settings catalog profile or group policy for on-premise devices. Devices assigned group IDs using this approach will keep this group ID no matter where in the world they are and will only ever share content with devices that share the same group ID. So you might like the idea of grouping, but you don't want to use static assignments. You are looking for a more dynamic approach. That's where group ID source comes in. Delivery optimization can look to other sources for group ID. There are options like AD site for on-prem devices or DHCP scope options and tenant IDs for AAD joint devices. For our customers interested in grouping on Azure AD joint devices, we see DHCP scope option 234 as the most popular, so we are going to cover that in more detail here. So firstly, if you are going to use the DHCP option, you need to add option 234 to your DHCP scopes as a configurable value. If you are using Microsoft DHCP server, you can do this by adding a new predefined option to your DHCP server. The name would be group ID and the data type is string and the code is 234. After adding the option, you can generate a GUID for your group using PowerShell. Then you can go to the scope options to configure options, find the 234 group ID option and paste in your GUID. Now this group ID will be assigned to devices that have a group ID source configured to DHCP when they get an IP address from the DHCP scope. Let's check out how this works. We have a DHCP server with multiple subnets. Subnet 1 and subnet 2 are configured with the blue group ID and subnet 3 is configured with the purple group ID. In this section, we'll talk about some of the additional delivery optimization policies that might be relevant for your organization. Delivery optimization will only share content under certain conditions. You can modify these conditions to suit your environment. 
For example, you may want to allow clients to share download content even while on battery and you may want to allow clients with 4 gigabytes or less to share content. In EDU customers, we see many customers set the minimum battery to 40% and the minimum RAM to 2 gigabytes. There are also policies for minimum disk size, monthly upload cap and allowing caching over VPN. Delivery optimization has a setting that allows you to prioritize downloading from peers or connected cache before also downloading from the content delivery network or HTTP. In this example, we have a background delay set to 600 seconds. After the download starts, parts of the file are downloaded from peers and after the delay has elapsed, the client also downloads from HTTP. In this example, 70% of the download is sourced from peers before also downloading from HTTP. If all of the content is available on peers with a fast connection, then it's possible with this setting that 100% of the content is downloaded from peers before the delay is elapsed, like in this example. The delay can be set differently for foreground and background downloads. The foreground download priority is typically for actions that are initiated by the user. For example, installing an application from company portal or the store. While background downloads are for things that user isn't waiting for. For example, Windows update downloads. The settings for these delays that work best will differ for every customer. However, as a starting point, we recommend a background delay of 600 seconds or 300 seconds when using Microsoft connected cache. And then for foreground, we recommend a delay of 60 seconds or 30 seconds with Microsoft connected cache. You can use the reporting we demonstrate later in the presentation to tweak these values to balance optimizing bandwidth saving with user experience. Finally, we can also configure the cache itself. By default, content is only kept in cache for three days. If disk space allows, we recommend setting this to 14 days to get maximum savings. Delivery optimization will also by default only cache files over 50 megabytes. For network with 30 or more clients, we recommend reducing this value to something much lower like one megabyte. Remember that if you have foreground delays for HTTP, that users may end up waiting 30 seconds per file, even for very small files. There are also policies for max cache size in gigabytes or percentage and the cache drive location. Now let's check out the experience of configuring delivery optimization settings using Microsoft Intune settings catalog. So go to intune.microsoft.com and then click on devices and then select configuration. Now we'll go to the policies tab, select create policies in the platform, select windows 10 and later and in the profile type, select settings catalog and click on create. Give the profile a name like delivery optimization and press next. Then click on add settings. Scroll down and find the category for delivery optimization. And now you will notice that all the settings we have talked about plus more are available here. In this example, we are going to configure the DO download mode. DO delay foreground download from HTTP and DO delay background download from HTTP. We are also going to configure the DO minimum battery percentage allowed to upload and minimum RAM allowed to peer. Once you have added all the settings, you need to click on the cross so that we can configure these settings. We are going to set the download mode to HTTP blended with peering behind the same NAT. Going to change the minimum RAM allowed to peer to two gigabytes the minimum battery percentage allowed to 40%, delay background download from HTTP to 300 seconds, and delay foreground download from HTTP to 30 seconds. Once you are ready, press next. 
configure scope tags as necessary and then click on next assign the policy to devices as you need press next review the settings and then press create you can monitor the effectiveness of delivery optimization by checking the activity monitor for delivery optimization in the settings application You can also check for delivery optimization effectiveness by using PowerShell. There are commands for getting the current status of delivery optimization, getting delivery optimization logs, and also doing analysis for the last month. You can also monitor your organization using Windows Update for Business reports. Get started today by going to aka.ms slash WUFB reports. You can find links to some of our resources in the video description. Make sure you subscribe to our channel for future videos about Intune and device management in education. Thank you.